Hey everyone, Lee here from York Travy. So I thought I'd do this video um, just to walk through, I guess, the latest software updates on the Rose 150B. Uh, what does it bring to the table? Uh, and also take a look at the, the RA180, which is a, uh, on the face of things, um, a relatively straightforward integrated amplifier until you get around the back of it. And they have this BTL system, uh, which confuses the hell out of a lot of people. And I thought I'll do a video looking at how do you wire up speakers such as the Sir and Swift Mu2s uh, to a very complex output amplifier such as the RA180. Uh, but let's take a quick look at the uh, the menu system first and foremost and see what's really changed. Uh, one of the things to note, um, I always change my icon set. I am not a fan of the how it ships out the box um, icons. Um, I'm sure you've seen this before on, on other videos, but just head into your settings Go to your display, and from within here, you can change your icon themes. Um, so it ships how it ships, but you've got a couple of options that you can select later down the line. I'm running Type C. Uh, type D is a bit more, I guess, Apple orientated. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of it. It's a bit too black and white for me. Um, but if I go back to my settings, which has changed icon now, so it won't be as easy to see. Come on, where are you? Settings, there it is. Um, again, into display, go to icon theme, and away you go. And, and you can also obviously sort out your home menu in terms of what you want to see. I've left everything on here for now, just, just as it is. So the biggest update, I guess, in the latest version of Rose OS, um, and just for clarity, we're running version 4.2. Uh, if you want the full version information, uh, we can see it here under System Info. It's 4.2, um, and it's 4.221, uh, which is the version that we're running. This was a brand new unit that we've unboxed today. Um, our X demo unit's just sold, so we're, we're back into a brand new unit again. Um, so we're running, obviously, version 4.2. Version of, of, uh, of, of the X MOS is, is 3115, um, that you can see, obviously, on here. So... What's changed? Uh, the biggest change, realistically, is Apple Music. So, in terms of all the other apps that are on here, they all look and feel the same. Uh, but we've now got Apple Music on here, uh, which is obviously interesting, given the number of streamers out there that don't support Apple Music. Uh, far, far outweighs the numbers that do support Apple Music. So, it's actually really cool to see... Uh, you know, a relatively new brand, I want to say new brand, you know, they've not been around anywhere near on the market um, in the higher end hi-fi world as other brands out there. Um, but they've, they've really got to grips with what the consumers are looking for in terms of an integrated streaming experience with Bugs, Quobas, um, Tidal, Apple Music, Airplay 2, all of those bits and pieces that's really what's uh, what's what's making our customers stand up and go, wow, this is a really cool product. And, and there's more of those types of advancements coming through as well. Um, so Apple Music, that's super cool. Um, if you're an iPhone user, it integrates quite nicely. Obviously, App Apple have moved away now from having to have music just on an Apple device. Any device supports, including Android. Um, so that's really cool. We've now got Apple Music on there. My daughter loves it, so she's super happy. Um, we also saw, I think it was in maybe version 4.1 of software, but it's been a while since we did one of these videos. Um, when you're in your playlist now, um, you can now see um, latest registration order. Do I want to create it with ascending or descending? Um, so we can now filter and sort the music that we're looking at in here um, via, different, via different ways, which you could not do before. It was always in the same way. Now we can actually order the playlists or the tracks or the albums based on what we hit when we hit it. Um, and again, if I go back and look at my uh, my actual albums, uh, what was the latest album or the earliest albums, it was back to a bit of Guns N' Roses and some, um, some other older stuff and then descending what's the most recent stuff that I've, uh, I've added in here as well. So, so this latest registration order, ascending and descending, 
uh, is uh, is quite a nice function and feature. And I know that a lot of people have been saying, I want this on Quobuz. I'm led to believe that that is the case and that is happening soon as well. Um, so definitely watch out for, uh, for, for the next finish software where we're expecting to see something similar where you can now order your albums, your playlists, your tracks, etc. there on Quobuz. That's likely going to be coming through soon. So that, that's another nice function and feature. Um, one of the things I get asked often is, you know, what, what do I do with my rose once it gets here? Well, two things really. One is, am I using it as a preamp or am I using it just as a standalone streamer? Now, with the RA180, which is an integrated amplifier, um, I'm using it as a source. It's just a streamer. I can use it as a preamp if I want to. Obviously, it's got a fantastic DAC on here. Um, so I can bring in other digital sources and output into here. And I can make this be a power amplifier. Uh, it has something over here called bypass amp mode. Um, and when I bypass the uh, the actual preamp, it then becomes a 2 or a 400 watt per channel power amplifier. So that's something I'll look at in a little while. So my first question is, is this a preamp or a streamer? And depending on the answer to that question, I'll go into my input and output settings. By default, everything over here is turned on. Now, that's fine if you're going to be bringing other stuff in, but I like to isolate and disable things at software and at chassis level in terms of what am I using the streamer for? So let's turn off the digital inputs. My only outputs are my balanced uh, XLR cables. And with that, I'm going to set my pre-out level setting. And what, what I'm looking to do here is basically match my other sources, if I've got other sources, into my amplifier. So I might select line one, CD player, and that's at 85 decibels with a volume halfway up. I'll listen to the rows at, let's say, one millivolt, listen to it and see what it sounds like. If it sounds good, great. If it's a little bit quiet, I'll go up to 2,000 millivolts or 3,000 millivolts as required. So I set my level based on what I'm using the streamer for or, or, or the rest of the system for. That's the first thing that I do. The second thing is that I look at my phase filter and I'm looking at what am I listening to? Now, typically how I like um, my system set up is actually with brick wall. I'm a massive lover of brick wall filter. But if you listen to a lot of MQA, which if you're a Tidal user, I am a Tidal user, that's where you might want to start and look at the minimum phase fast roll-off filter. Um, so I'll, I'll switch between these. And it's a good demo to do. You know, this is what really differentiates the RS150B from the 250 in terms of the sound quality through the filters is significant on the 150B versus what we see on the 250. Um, so I like to be able to do a back-to-back -back with the 250 going through the filters and also on the 150B as well and say that this 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 is the benefit that this system's bringing in terms of the DAC that's on board. Um, I also bring USB files in. Um, so I've not installed an SSD into here yet, but that'll be on the, the to-do list. So I'm going to be installing a one terabit Samsung, I think... Uh, 870 Evo Pro uh, SSD um, that has a load of my rip music on there um, and with that it's uh, it's DSD 512 so I, I always look at you know what is my DSD mode um, it obviously supports DSD to PCM um, and that's up to 128 um, interestingly DSD over PCM native is not supported I need to work out what's going on here I'm sure this was enabled at an earlier date uh, but obviously native DSD not over PSA, uh, PCM, uh, up to DSD 512 is what, what, I, what a lot of my files are encoded to. So that's where I typically end up setting this. There's not really a great deal else in here in terms of, you know, is the phase inverted? This all depends on your um, on your your system. Uh, if you're a US customer or a, or a European customer in terms of the pinouts on your XLR cables and your power amplifiers. If I run on an Emotiva power amp, then I need to have phase invert on because the you'll notice the ground cold and hot are flipped. So pin three on a US system is hot, but on a EU system it's cold. Um, so you have to know what amplifier and pinout you've got. Luckily, the back of the rows uh, has an actual diagram, but it, it tells you if you need to basically 
invert the phase. You, you, sh you should know straight away if it's out of phase anyway from a sound, but it's not always as clear as what you might think. So always check the phase invert based on uh, based on what your um, your amplification is. Um, other things that I look at, software volume control. So do I want uh, to adjust digital audio using the Rose control software? I'm not actually a fan. I've played with it before. Um, I'm not a massive fan. Uh, I found it to be a little noisy. Um, so software volume control, I leave off. The use case where you might be using this um, is if you've got, uh, let's say you've got a, a very, very high gain source and you want to be able to change the volume of that, soft, uh, that codec at software level. You might do that here. I've not played enough with it to really experiment, but when I have implemented it before, it's been very noisy. I've backed it straight off and, and life's been good again. So RS150B, this is where um, we've we've obviously seen some of the changes in software. Apple OS is the big one. Um, like I say, that, that for me is a big, big tick in the box. There's still a couple of stability issues. Um, natively around bringing um, the RSA 780, the CD drive in. Um, I've noticed recently that if I'm ripping two CD albums, the second album takes the encoding of the first album's details. So you've got two albums with all the same song names on, but the second album is actually the second album songs. Uh, it just encodes it as or, or, or titles it as if it's the first album. That that they're looking into, they're aware of that. I've seen a couple of people mentioning that on Facebook groups. Um, so that's obviously all good. Um, make sure uh, also when you're playing around with things like um, Rose Tube, um, a lot of the time when you first power this up, um, I've got my account logged in here, so this should now be set to a UK region. Um, but it's very easy um, if you've not got the, the right settings in here to see a load of Korean stuff in here. Um, so we, we, you have to, within the, the main settings, set your region when you're starting this up. If you just fly through the menu and leave it where it is, uh, you can end up... Uh, <laughs> having a lot of Korean stuff in your recommended artists and stuff. Make sure you set your regions correctly in here. Um, admittedly, I don't use Rose Tube enough yet, uh, but I know customers that have been enjoying what it brings uh, brings to the table, uh, and that's something which I'll probably start and do a bit more of with the TV above us here in the dem room, uh, just, to, uh, just to see what's going on, really. Um, the radio I found to be very stable, um, I sure want to sign updates. The sure didn't know there was an update available, but let's do that. Um, I, I've seen a lot of people using more and more of the radio systems. Um, I found it to be reliable, good quality. Uh, I always compare it to tuning radio in here in the UK, um, and I've been pleasantly surprised with the the quality of of the radio itself. Um, again, you have to make sure you set your um, your region right because you can see here I've ended up with a load of um, random foreign channels um, so you have to make sure that you've got your encoding settings done um, and there's also a region uh, it's set for career up here look at the minute uh, we need to make sure that this says all the way at the bottom United Kingdom and now what we'll see is we get all the radio stations that we would uh, would expect to get. Again, you have to click up here uh, where it said career before to get what you want in there. Uh, again, you can add your own streams in here as well if you know the link. Uh, that's quite a nice feature um, just so you can bring in your own, your own music in as well. Um, so that's quite nice. But yeah, we can now see that we've got um, our radio stations here in the UK now, uh, now on here. Um, the big difference, I guess, from... You know, the um, the radio app, which is what we're in now. Let's come out of here. Um, and then look at Rose Radio. So recently played channels, none at all. Uh, local popular channels. Wait for this to come up. There we go. So you'll notice a different interface altogether. Um... So if you want a favorite things you can do, just a single tap on the favorite icon uh, and away we go. Um, I've not seen that many people 
debating which one's best out of the all of them. There's a lot more granulation in terms of the filtering as far as what the stations may be. Great if you're more of an international listener. Certainly out if you want to listen to stuff out in the States, for example. You see a lot of people more using Rose Radio there. Whereas the normal radio, if you just listen to your core radio stations, it should be good enough for everybody. Um, I think that's pretty much it on the RS-150. I've not seen any other changes. The HDMI bug is fixed as well, by the way. So once upon a time, uh, I'm not sure if you ever noticed. Um, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Uh, in the input and output settings, um, if you enabled, let's say, HDMI output... Uh, you could never then re-enable your analog output. You had to factory reset the device. Um, all of these now work. You can now select in any order, arc it if you want to, um, and then you head back to the actual RS-150 streamer. You couldn't do that previously. So the fix that bug, that was a, a biggie. Uh, it, it cost me, it co caused me a little bit of headache with uh, with a particular customer. But luckily, uh, Hi-Fi Rose uh, ad uh, adapted that in, in the latest version of software. So, good. That's uh, that's a little quick walkthrough again back of the RS-150B. Uh, I intend to do a video on the RS-250 versus the 150B. I know that's a, a common question that gets asked quite regularly. Um, let's have a look at the RA-180 then. So, first and foremost, it's heavy. It's absolutely stunning to look at. Um, let's have a little, little look at the functions here from left to right. So... You only select a dial into, and this is really quite satisfying in terms of it's a proper clunk. In terms of you, you feel like you're definitely selecting something positively here. Um, we've then got this. Uh, so, do we want to use the high frequency crossover uh, again? At the minute, it's bypass. If I want to bring it on, can do so, and obviously, I can set my gain and the high pass filter. Well, I want to apply on here and turn that off now. Coming across the phono stage, so if you select phono and the phono input, you've then got your phono control here. So again, turn that on, you get a satisfying light, say I am now turned on. Um, you've then got your, um, your filtering in terms of your rear filtering, uh, where do you want that to come in and how do you want it to sound. And you've also got the target roll off as well. So again, the, the, these, these are obviously key functions, especially if you started to use moving call cartridges. Again, the switch on the back in terms of what cartridge you're using here. Um, the phone lamp I've not yet played with. I've only had this here for a couple of hours so far. I've just been enjoying what's coming in from a balance perspective. Um, so I can turn off the phone preamp. Um, again, I can bypass bass control and treble. If I want to bring that on, then I can do. So I can now increase the bass, uh, increase the treble or decrease it. And I can also change the balance as well. Um, again, the centre is absolutely locked. Feels a little flimsy than I would like, does that actually? Um, you know, for, for something that is so well built, I would have maybe have hoped that this was physically a bit more, had a bit more tension behind it. Uh, you know, there's plenty of tension here, but the switch has got a little bit of play, which I'm not a massive fan of. But um, that is that is what it is. I'm not really going to use that function ever, realistically. Uh, so I'll turn that off now. Coming across, we've got this wicked volume control. So at the top here, this is how loud, uh, in terms of percentage power, that I've got now, the row set at. Um, as this is configured in BTL, A and B mode, I'm running 400 watts per channel, which is a lot. Uh, the speakers can take it, luckily. Now, if I just get tidal open, I've got this set at one millivolt, as well in terms of my uh, my actual output here and music. Uh, let's just select something in here. Um, do, 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 do. So a bit of killer by seal. Right, here we go. So, if I start to increase this now. So at a normal listening distance, back here a little bit so I'm sitting here about three meters back uh, of this system uh, this is in one of our our demo rooms here uh, currently populated with a lot of um, monitor audio silver gold and platinum services and uh, the new Lima acoustic stuff 
Um, but this is about where I'd want to be. Um, now, if I go to... This is now at 40%. To live your life. This is a really good listening volume. This is what I would say is for somebody who is a bit of harder of hearing, this is where I'd be. <laughs> if we cry. I'll roll this back a bit now. So you've got this lovely volume control. And I mean, you know, just, just look at everything going on here. Absolutely stunning. And it's really a nice amount of resistance in there as well. Um, which is good. Obviously, we've got the live meters as well. So these are not reversed like the software versions are. These are, these are working properly. So that's all good. Um, and then we've got, obviously, down here, a couple of buttons here. So, dimmer. It's currently set to full. Knock it down a level. All the lighting is dim a little bit. Good for nighttime viewing. And if you want them off altogether, all the way down. Subsonic should need no introduction if you want to roll off the bottom end if you've got a lot of woofer movement, especially when you're using the phono stage. Subsonic's a nice feature to have. Uh, that's all good. And then you've got the attenuator. I'm not going to pretend I know what that's doing yet. I've not explored the menu system or have I read about the attenuation. I'm guessing it's going to apply a soft filter um, to the incoming signal and attenuate the signal down somewhat. That would be my assumption. You've then got this speaker selector knob, A, B, and off. So at the minute, I've got this wired up as a normal uh, stereo full range pair of speakers. There's only two terminals on the back of the Sir and Swifts. Um, so I've got these set up in the BTL A, BTL B mode. Now, what does that mean? Let's come around the back and have a little look here, shall we? This amp is very heavy. So, first and foremost, down the back here at the bottom, I've got this selector switch. Just try and uh, zoom in a bit there. There we go. So you can see I'm set to BTL A, BTL B. Now, the reason I've got it set to this is because I'm using a full range pair of speakers that are not running separate high frequency and low frequency cabling, i.e. biamping. So, the way in which I've got this wired, you'll see on the labels here, focus in. So this is the left speaker. And in BTL A mode, this is my BTL positive terminal. That's why I've got the red connector here. And then over here, we've got BTL negative. Even though it says speaker left positive, I've now got the negative terminal running into here. And I've got the same then over on the, the right channel. Uh, just to point out, I'm running here the, uh, the new Mythical Creatures XLR cable. These are the Thunderbird cables from AudioQuest. They are absolutely lovely. Um, <clears throat> anywho, back to back to the point. Um, we're running here, obviously, in BTL mode. That allows us to run full range. If I was biamping my speaker A, I have got a full range set of speakers. Let's say I brought in the the Platinum 300s here, um, which obviously have got dual terminals at the bottom and the back of them. Uh, then I will be able to run in biamp mode and I would then have my speaker left and right, high and low frequency. Um, so this one over on the right hand side, or the, left, or the left channel of the left channel, left pair would then be my high frequency, right side of the left channel would then be my low frequency and the same over there as well. Uh, and again, that would give me 400 watts of power in its own mode. Um, so depending on how you run this in bridge mode or non-bridge mode gives you either 200 watts per channel or 400 watts per channel it's 200 watts per channel typically if you're running all four channels two on the top and two on the bottom in btl mode you've got 400 watts into eight ohms per channel uh, which is a crazy amount of power um, and once the amps had another five, six hours on it, I'm then going to bring something a bit thirstier into play and have a look at what these, uh, what these really sound like. 
Um, you'll notice there's no digital inputs on here whatsoever, as you'd expect. This is a, a, a analog only uh, input. Um, there is a bypass input as well for you AV lovers. Uh, that's something which is uh, which is quite nice. Um, there is a remote control which allows you to change volume and select your sources as well, which again is a nice touch for a analog type amplifier. Um, so that's that's really goodness. Uh, one thing I'm hoping to see soon that comes out on the rows might be AV, AV bypass. Obviously, you've got a single analog line input um, that's unbalanced. So if you're going in from an AV receiver, it might be a nice addition to have that uh, where you can select, you know, AV receiver input. This is a preamp straight to a power amp and you've got full, full control in here with a much better preamp, obviously. Maybe that'll come, maybe it's not. I've put the feature request in, we'll, uh, we'll have to see. But while ever you've got an RE180, you've got the bypass input anyway, then you should be good to go. So that's a little bit of a, I guess, a, a rambling walkthrough of the, the 150B and the RE180. Uh, if I can help you at all with anything that you may need from a Hi-Fi Rose perspective, we are a, a premium stockist here. We're called Yorkshire AV. We're based just south of uh, Selby, just north of Doncaster in uh, North Yorkshire. Um, and on the store we have the 150B, the RE180 and the 250. Um, I think I've got a 201 floating around somewhere. I think that's with a customer at the minute, actually. Uh, but we've always got plenty of things in to come and look at and listen to. Uh, and a good range of speakers that are suitable with the, uh, with the amplification and the streamers as well. So my name's Lee, if I can help you at all, please ping me, reach out to me. And if you've got any questions or queries, uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to drop a comment. Thank you all very much for your time and uh, look forward to speaking with you all soon. Cheers.